He's the all-time scorer for France and Arsenal and a serious contender for the Premier League's greatest ever player. Fast, skillful, elegant and creative, he was a true artist of the game, the ultimate striker. If you've only heard the legend but never seen Thierry on replay, you have to watch this. In 1990, Arnold Catalano, a scout from the French side Monaco, was sent to watch one of E.S. Viry Châtillon's games, our regional team from Paris. The home team won 6-0 and all goals were scored by a 13-year-old by the name of Thierry Daniel Henry. Catalano asked him on the spot to join Monaco. No trial was needed. After a crash course at the prestigious Clairefontaine Football Institute, he signed for Monaco's youth team. And if someone has an eye for young talent in football, that's Monaco's coach at the time, Arsène Wenger. Wenger needed to replace his latest gem in attack, George Weah, and trusted the young Henri. He played him on the left wing, as he believed his natural pace, ball control, and skill would bring far greater results against fullbacks than physically imposing centerbacks. He was a hit! Once Wenger was gone, Henri was fundamental in Monaco's Ligue 1 title win in 96 and the star of the squad at their European campaign next year where they reached the semi-finals and got the whole world talking about his talent when the French prodigy confirmed his quality in France's 1998 World Cup win. The old woman a bit after the World Cup and said to came up to me and said I don't like football I don't really follow football but I would like to thank you and I just said why? Because she said to me that, apart from the liberation of, uh, of, uh, of Paris, I've never seen that before. If this story reminds you of another young and eclectic French attacker who came out of Monaco, impressed everyone and won the World Cup, you're not entirely wrong. Once Henri got back from lifting the heaviest trophy in the world, Monaco started to look small to him. But things took a wrong turn, and with Monaco's reluctance to sell, Henri found himself at Juventus in the Serie A. Under Marcello Lippi and a younger Carlo Ancelotti, the Serie A landscape was not the right fit for Henri's talent. Fielded as a left winger, he was forced to track back attackers and be more defensively engaged, which made him lose his spot to Gianluca Zambrotta. Yet Henri's woes in Italy were a blessing in disguise. Arsene Wenger, now the head coach at Arsenal, was more than happy to rescue him. I remember Mr. Dean giving me the DVD union right and he said, Thierry, this is what you need to do. Uh, wow, I'll try. Henri was tasked with the impossible to replace Arsenal's highest goal scorer with 185 goals, Ian Wright. But in the beginning, Thierry wasn't even sure he could score at all. One day, I decided to play him through the middle. I said, look, take the ball through the middle. We'll give you some passes. Go ahead and score. He said, you can play me through the middle, but I can't score goals. It became a thing that everyone, when is he going to score? Henri holding off Almeida. Oh, what a goal! Thierry Henri scores his first for Arsenal! Henri was unstoppable. He could score every type of goal, close range or long range, power and finesse shots, going around the keeper, cutting defenses like a surgeon's scalpel, inventing his own moves along the way faking passes with one foot to do it with the other. He did things his way. The debate was, well, if he's not in the box, he will never score goals. But why do I have to beat in the box to score goals? I wanted to show everybody that they were wrong. Thierry Henry made the left wing his habitat. He would stay on the left, close to the line, and then cut inside on his way to goal. Equally dangerous inside the box or 20 yards away from it. And Henri's odd positioning meant he would create space and chances for his teammates to benefit from at Arsenal. To score the amount of goals he scored and create the amount of chances he created was testament to the fact that the team and assisting the team was vitally important to him as well. With his goal tally rising, improving the game of his team and those around him came the feats and the titles. No, no, when I say show-off, I don't say that he likes the show-off, I say that he likes the culture of America. Yes, yes, yes. Qui wow, elle est euh, au sein d'un groupe, en tout cas de ce groupe-là des Invincibles, c'était le meilleur joueur en fait. On savait que s'il y avait 0-0, on avait besoin d'un but, c'est lui qui allait marquer. Donc forcément, ça te met à part du groupe. Donc tu as un groupe 
et tu as un joueur qui est, qui, qui, qui est au-dessus du groupe. Ouais. À Barcelone, tu as Messi, à Madrid, tu avais, avais Ronaldo. Et c'est comme ça, toutes les grandes équipes ont de grands joueurs et ces grands joueurs mm. sont toujours un petit peu mis à part. Henri scored 22 and 26 goals in his first two seasons. By the third one, Arsenal lifted the Premier League with the Frenchman as the Premier League's top striker. In the next five seasons, Thierry Henry would never score fewer than 30 goals. Arsenal won two Premier Leagues, two FA Cups, and two Community Shields. The Highbury Gunners became invincibles, finishing a full Premier League campaign as undefeated champions. It was the season of King Henri XIV, who reached his peak potential, scoring 39 goals and giving out 17 assists. Thierry, c'était le gars qui, euh, s'il avait marqué deux buts, au lieu d'avoir un penalty et de marquer le, le hat-trick, il était capable de donner le penalty à, à un coéquipier. Et ça, je l'ai vu. C'est pas, c'est pas, je, je dis peut-être, je, je l'ai vu faire. Il a, dans l'année, il essaie de tirer des pénalties à Lorraine, notre arrière droit. Et ça, en fait, je crois que Lorraine, il marquait 4-5 buts par saison. C'était que des pénalties. Donc, clairement, pour un joueur qui est potentiellement euh, dans, la, dans le titre pour gagner le ballon d'or, c'est 5 buts en plus, quoi. Messi et Cristiano Ronaldo ont fait ces nombres normaux pour nous. Mais Henri a fait ça avant eux. Ce qui demande la question, why ce que Thierry Henry a un ballon d'or La France, il faut rester, il faut rester gentil. Il ne faut pas trop faire de vagues. Euh, si on fait un hat-trick, il faut dire que bon, ce n'est pas moi, c'est l'équipe qui a marqué. Ouais, ouais, ouais. Euh, si on a gagné le ballon d'or, ce n'est pas moi qui ai gagné le ballon d'or, mais c'est mes amis. La ouais. France, c'est ça. Et, et Thierry, lui, il n'est pas là-dedans. Thierry, lui, c'est un gars, voilà, il est très US, il est très… Euh, ouais, tu as, as des gens qui vont dire que c'est femme parent, tu as des gens qui vont dire qu'il se la raconte. Non, Thierry, il aime ça. Il aime les défis, il aime les challenges. Et je pense qu'en fait, c'est juste une image qui ne colle pas avec ce que la France représente, mm. si je peux dire, dans le foot en tout cas. Hein. Ouais, ouais, ouais. ouais. Euh, et je pense que c'est ça. Je pense qu'en fait, on l'a mal ciblé et on va, tenter de, on, va, on va préférer prendre une personne qui est plus tranquille, plus réservée, sans dire de non, parce qu'on sait tous. Euh... It's one of those cases where the answer won't satisfy anyone. The 2003-2004 season was a pretty weird year in football, with Porto winning the Champions League and Greece conquering the Euro. Still, why Shevchenko won the prize and Henri came fourth escapes us. And that wasn't the only time we can't find the explanation. Henri and Arsenal became arguably the best playing side in European football. With their electrifying style of direct counter-attack mixed with first-touch possession. Wenger and Henri's Arsenal was the hipster's Barcelona. Coming up against Thierry Henri and the Invincibles, I would say that was the most difficult job in football. But there was a final test in their paths, lifting the Champions League. In the 2005-2006 season, Henri set his mind to it, even breaking Ian Wright's goal-scoring record along the way. Then, Henri put on show after show in the knockout stages, shocking the Bernabeu. Every game was better than the last one, and you knew to expect the unexpected. And after eliminating Riquelme's Villarreal, Arsenal made it to the final stage in Paris against the upcoming powerhouse of football, FC Barcelona. Deco, Ronaldinho, Iniesta, and a debutante Messi against the Invincibles of Bergkamp. Despite all his efforts, it wasn't enough for Arsenal to lift the title. They're already a good team, so if you have them, it's going to be very difficult to beat them. All the 15, 20 minutes, last minutes will be difficult when you play for so long, 11 against 10. Uh, the regret I have is I uh, would have loved to play this game uh, with 11 men. One football dynasty made way for the next. As Thierry Henry kissed Highbury's ground goodbye, he knew his time at Arsenal was also coming to an end. His next adventure would find him at the newly anointed best team in the world, FC Barcelona. Not convinced by Arsenal's future plans, with Dean stepping out and the uncertainty of Wenger's future, he went to the Catalan Giants. Can you even count how many goals there are in this photograph alone? Thierry Henry, accustomed to using his skill to the benefit of the team, proved a perfect fit for Barca's transition into the greatest team in modern history. He became a left winger under Pep Guardiola, the man he says taught him football again. I relearned 
how to play the game when I went to Barcelona under him. Um, so he goes without saying that with Pep you can talk about the game. I, I think he will not even go to sleep and still talk about the game and you will fall asleep and he's still talking. So you guys know some of the invention that he had in the game. He's way ahead of the game. Even if Guardiola once subbed him off for scoring a goal. Pep Guardiola had a plan. If you don't actually do what he's asking you to, you're going to be in trouble. But Henri prospered at the Camp no. In the 2009-2010 season, he conquered the historic sextuple, winning every title on the list. That year would end with the controversy of his handball goal against Ireland to qualify France for the World Cup. When we see, for example, a guy like Maradona, who marks a goal with the hand and who is... Qui est adulé, ouais. qui est mis sur un, à un certain niveau dans son pays. Et Thierry, en fait, il qualifie son pays à la Coupe du Monde, euh, une action qui est exactement la même. Et en fait, on lui tombe dessus. C'est très compliqué d'aller demander à ce joueur d'être plus chaleureux envers les, les, les médias. Henri regretted the injustice of it so much, he decided to quit the national team after France's shameful World Cup exit. It is the end for me, the national team. Yeah. Thierry Henry took his trade to the MLS, and with the New York Red Bulls, he showed an entire country what football looks like. He scored 52 goals and gave 42 assists in 135 games and won the Supporters' Shield, impressing everyone with his variety of deadly skills, and leaving us with one of the most iconic goal celebrations. Not to be confused with his most famous one against Tottenham, sliding in front of Spur fans after running the entire pitch with the ball at his feet before scoring. From his hundreds of goals, the one for his legacy. First of all, I want to say thanks uh, to you, Mr. Wood, and, and everybody involved uh, uh, on this project. Uh, I never thought in my uh, wildest dream that uh, uh, I would have been like this one day in front of the, 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 the stadium of the team that I love. Henri scored over 400 goals to become the all-time scorer for his national team and Arsenal. Won two Premier League titles, a World Cup, the Champions League, two La Liga titles and the FIFA Club World Cup. He is one of the greatest names in the game and possibly the best one yet in the modern history of the Premier League. This was his story. Actually, there's another chapter to it. The return of the king. You know, we are happy to, to see him back at VMWitz. On January 6th, 2012, Thierry Henry decided to go back to Arsenal for one last goodbye. I left as an Arsenal fan and I came back as an Arsenal fan. And then you ask any fan in the world what they would love to do one day is to score for the team. Thierry Henry! He's left something to remember him by! That was my moment. A goodbye goal was a great feeling.